Joining me now here in New York, Rick Tyler, MSNBC political analyst and former spokesman for Senator Ted Cruz. Also with us, Harold Ford Jr., former Tennessee congressman and professor of public policy at the University of Michigan's Gerald Ford School of Public Policy. You guys have got to get some shorter titles. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Happy, Happy Valentine's Anna Howard Day. Shaw Day, I should say. Um, Rick, first to you. Does yeah. this White House have any credibility left? I think this is a real problem. I think this White House is in crisis. It is inconceivable to me that uh, General Flynn would have called the Russian ambassador, first of all, without the president's knowledge. And if he was going to call the ambassador, the number one topic would have been sanctions. So he would have had to been prepared to, to talk about sanctions. And if he was prepared to talk about sanctions, he doesn't have any authority to tell the Russians anything about sanctions unless the president approved it. So it seems pretty clear to me that the president would have known about this conversation so before the, it happened. The president knew about it, <coughs> but then did the vice president know about it? Because well, he went on national that's television very interesting, and said that he it? did not talk about sanctions. So either two things happened. Either, either General Flynn and the president knew about it and they didn't tell the vice president and left him out there, or the president, vice president on lied. So and you seem to be calling that something of a conspiracy. Or cover up? It just looks very clear to me. It's very it's just inconceivable to me that General Flynn would have been freelancing on Russian sanctions without the knowledge of the president. Harold, Maxine Waters keeps coming out, she's a bit on the fringe for the Democratic Party by saying this, that Donald Trump is gonna get himself impeached. Do you see a circumstance where that could happen? Well, clearly, if if the the, the state of play is paralleled or mirrors what Rick has shared. You certainly could see a, a playing of events where Republicans may decide enough is enough. Certainly the Lindsey Graham, John McCain wing of the party is not fond of this president, uh, of his policies that is. And the fact that it's Russia that is the key core substantive issue here, one could see that. But I think where we are today, if Rick is right, let's take the other side and say the president did not know. I think it's equally troubling and it shows that there's a... Uh, kind of a, a wandering and a, a lone wolf policy there in the White House that allows aides to do whatever he or she may want to do. They've got to professionalize the White House, professionalize the Defense Department, professionalize the NSA staff and the State Department for a start. And if that doesn't happen over the next few weeks, you have to wonder if you're advising Xi in China, you're advising the North Korean leader or advising the Russian leader, which I'm not, you would have to be advising the three of them. Let's test this president, the new president of the United States. Let's test America because there seems to be disarray and disrepair in some of the important agencies. So either way you look at this thing, whether what Rick is saying is true, you take the exact opposite side, it's not a good picture for the White House, the Congress, or more importantly, the country. You both have deep ties to Washington. You obviously have conversations with people that are still working up there on Capitol Hill. What is the feeling behind the scenes, at least privately, about how this administration is going? Rick. The crisis of incompetence, and Harold's right, it, it absolutely has to be fixed. The reason you have leaks from the White House is disloyal to the, to the president. These are people, anybody who leaks is not being loyal to the president, which means the, the president has said this is a big problem, and it is, but the problem stems with him. People are not loyal to him. What about Russia? I mean, uh, this is a bad analogy, but if somebody accuses you of cheating on your husband or your wife with someone else, you make every effort to keep yourself away from that person, to try, and, to try and separate yourself, I know it's terrible, <laughs> Anna Howard shot it, um, to try and separate yourself from that person. Uh, and that's kind of what we see going on with Donald Trump and Russia. There are, there are so many questions surrounding his relationship with Russia. Why do they add to them by allowing these sorts of issues to come up, to be leaked, to become controversial, get so loud that he has to ask for the resignation of his national security advisor or be given it one way or the other. Well, that's the other thing, is why wouldn't he not have allowed Reince Priebus to to force resignation. That would put Reince in charge. At least someone would have been, at least would have been in a chain of command. Right. As I understand it, as Spicer said today, that the president demanded it. And so where is, where is Reince Priebus? Where is the chief of staff? The chief of staff seems more authority, but with, with regard to Russia, the, the president has made the moral equivalence between Russia and the United States. That's never been our stand. And so I understand he wants to have better relationships with Russia, but there is no moral equivalency between the United States and Russia. I think it was Casey, and right before we came on, he said the White House had been aware of this for maybe two weeks. The two White and a half House, weeks. Two and a half weeks, the White House Counsel's Office. So you have to, to take... Donald Trump has been aware of it for two and a half weeks. The council went immediately to Donald Trump and told him of this. Uh, and, and so my question, I think you were getting at this, if the Washington Post didn't come out and report this news right. on Friday and then on Monday, uh, would the public have ever found out about it? Because they knew for two and a half weeks that it was an issue of trust between uh, General Flynn and the president. Uh, when is it an issue of trust between the White House and those that Donald Trump has around him and the general public? 
you answered the question. I, I don't think there's any doubt. We probably have learned at some point, because Sally Yates may have shared this at some point, but the fact that the White House, the president was aware for two and a half weeks, and all of a sudden it reached a level where he couldn't, he didn't find it acceptable, or he found uh, Mr. Flynn's presence in the White House unacceptable for some reason. Why didn't that happen two and a half weeks ago? The, the reality is we'll get answers to some of these questions here in the next few weeks. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.